chapter 26, Genesis chapter 26. And there was a famine in the land, besides a famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gerar. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Do not go down into Egypt. Live in the land which I shall tell you of. Stay in this land, and I will be with you and will bless you. For unto you and unto your seed I will perform the oath which I swore unto Abraham your father. And I will make your seed to multiply as the stars of heaven, and will give to your seed all these countries. And in your seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. And Isaac lived in Gerar, and the men of the place asked him about his wife, and he said, She is my sister, for he feared to say, My wife, lest the men of the place should kill him for Rebekah, because she was beautiful to look upon. And when he had been there a long time, it came to pass that Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked out through the window and saw, and behold, Isaac was caressing Rebekah, his wife. And Abimelech called Isaac and said, Behold, she surely is your wife. Why did you say she is my sister? And Isaac said to him, Because I said, Lest I die on account of her. And Abimelech said, What is this that you have done to us? One of the people might have lain with your wife, and you would have brought guilt upon us. And Abimelech charged all his people, saying, He that touches this man or his wife shall surely be put to death. Then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him, and the man became great. And he went forward and grew until he became very great. And he had possession of flocks and possessions of herds, and many household servants. And the Philistines envied him. For all the wells which his father's servants had dug in the days of Abraham his father, the Philistines had stopped them and filled them with earth. And Abimelech said to Isaac, Go away from us, for you are much mightier than we are. And Isaac departed from there and pitched his tent in the valley of Gerar and lived there. And Isaac dug again the wells of water which they had dug in the days of Abraham his father, for the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham. And he called their names after the names by which his father had called them. And Isaac's servants dug in the valley and found there a well of living water. And the herdsmen of Gerar strove with Isaac's herdmen, saying, The water's ours. And he called the name of the well Essek because they strove with him. And they dug another well, and they strove for that also. And he called the name of it Sitna. And he moved from there and dug another well, and they did not strive for that. And he called the name of it Rehoboth. And he said, For now the Lord has made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. And he went from there to Beersheba, and the Lord appeared to him the same night and said, I am the God of Abraham your father. Do not fear, for I am with you, and will bless you and multiply your seed for my servant Abraham's sake. And he built an altar there and called upon the name of the Lord and pitched his tent there. And Isaac's servants dug a well there. Then Abimelech went to him from Gerar with Ahuzath, one of his friends, and Phicol, the chief captain of his army. And Isaac said to them, Why do you come to me, since you hate me and have sent me away from you? And they said, We saw certainly that the Lord was with you. And we said, Let there be now an oath between us, between us and you, and let us make a covenant with you, that you will do us no harm since we have not touched you, and since we have done nothing but good to you and have sent you away in peace. You are now the blessed of the Lord. And he made them a feast, and they ate and drank, and they rose up early in the morning and swore to one another. And Isaac sent them away, and they departed from him in peace. And the same day it came to pass that Isaac's servants came and told him about the water, and he called it Sheba. Therefore the name of the city is Beer Sheba unto this day. And Isaac was forty years old when he took to wife Judith, the daughter of Berei, the Hittite, and Bashemath, the daughter of Elon, the Hittite, who were a grief of mind to Isaac and to Rebekah. Chapter 27, Genesis chapter 27. 
And it came to pass when Isaac was old and his eyes were dim, so that he could not see, he called his oldest son Esau and said to him, My son. And he said to him, Behold, here I am. And he said, Behold, now I am old. I do not know the day of my death. Now therefore I pray you, take your weapons, your quiver and your bow, and go out to the field and hunt deer meat for me. And make tasty meat for me such as I love, and bring it to me so that I may eat, that my soul may bless you before I die. And Rebekah was listening when Isaac spoke to his son Esau. And Esau went to the field to hunt for deer meat in order to bring it in. And Rebekah spoke to her son Jacob, saying, Behold, I heard your father speak to your brother Esau, saying, Bring me deer meat, and make me tasty meat, so that I may eat and bless you before the Lord, before my death. Therefore, my son, obey my voice according to what I command you. Go now to the flock, and bring me from there two good kids of the goats, and I will make them tasty meat for your father, such as he loves. And you shall bring it to your father, so that he may eat, and that he may bless you before his death. And Jacob said to his mother, Rebekah, Behold, Esau, my brother, is a hairy man, and I am a smooth man. My father will perhaps feel me, and I shall seem to him as a deceiver, and I shall bring a curse upon me, and not a blessing. And his mother said to him, Your curse be upon me, my son. Only obey my voice, and go bring them to me. And he went. And he took them and brought them to his mother, and his mother made tasty meat such as his father loved. And Rebekah took the costly garments of her older son Esau, which were with her in the house, and put them on Jacob, her younger son. And she put the skins from the kids of the goats on his hands and on the smooth of his neck. And she gave the tasty meat and the bread which she had prepared into the hand of her son Jacob. And he came to his father and said, My father... And he said, Here I am, who are you, my son? And Jacob said to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. I have done as you asked me. Arise, I pray you, sit and eat of my dear meat, that your soul may bless me. And Isaac said to his son, How is it that you have found it so quickly, my son? And he said, Because the Lord your God brought it to me. And Isaac said to Jacob, Come near, I pray you, so that I may feel you, my son, whether you are truly my son Esau or not. And Jacob went near to Isaac his father, and he felt him and said, The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. And he did not know him, because his hands were hairy like his brother Esau's hands. And so he blessed him. And he said, Are you truly my son Esau? And he said, I am. And he said, Bring it to me, and I will eat of my son's dear meat, so that my soul may bless you. And he brought it near to him, and ate, and he brought him wine, and he drank. And his father Isaac said to him, Come near now, and kiss me, my son. And he came near, and kissed him. And he smelled the smell of his clothing, and blessed him, and said, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of a field, which the Lord has blessed. Therefore God give you of the dew of heaven, and the fatness of the earth, and plenty of corn and wine. Let people serve you, and let nations bow down to you. Be Lord over your brothers, and let your mother's sons bow down to you. And cursed be every one that curses you, and blessed be he that blesses you. And it came to pass, as soon as Isaac had made an end of blessing Jacob, and Jacob was scarcely gone from the presence of Isaac, his father, that Esau his brother came in from his hunting, and he also had made tasty meat, and brought it to his father. And he said unto his father, Let my father arise, and eat of his son's dear meat, so that your soul may bless me. And his father Isaac said to him, Who are you? And he said, I am your son, your firstborn, Esau. And Isaac trembled with a great trembling, and said, Who? Where is he who has hunted deer, and brought it to me, and I have eaten of all before you came, and have blessed him? Yes, he shall be blessed. And when Esau heard the voice of his father, he cried with a great and exceedingly bitter cry, and said to his father, Bless me, even me also, O my father. And he said, Your brother came with deceit and has taken away your blessing. And he said, Is he not rightly named Jacob? For he has supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright, and behold, now he has taken away my blessing." 
And he said, Have you not reserved a blessing for me? And Isaac answered and said to Esau, Behold, I have made him your lord, and all his brothers I have given him for servants. And with corn and wine I have supported him. And what shall I do now to you, my son? And Esau said to his father, Have you but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Isaac his father answered and said to him, Behold, your dwelling shall be of the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. And by your sword you shall live and s shall serve your brother. And it shall come to pass when you have the dominion, you shall break his yoke from off your neck. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing with which his father had blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, The days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then I will kill my brother Jacob. And these words of her older son Esau were told to Rebekah. And she went and called her younger son Jacob and said to him, Behold, your brother Esau comforts himself regarding you, intending to kill you. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice and arise. Flee to my brother Laban, to Haran, and stay with him a few days, until your brother's fury turns away, until your brother's anger turns away from you when he forgets what you have done to him. Then I will send and bring you from there. Why should I also be bereaved of both of you in one day? And Rebekah said to Isaac, I am weary of my life because of the daughters of Heth. If Jacob takes a wife of the daughters of Heth like these of the daughters of the land, what good shall my life do me? We begin reading now Genesis chapter 28. And Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and commanded him, and he said to him, You shall not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. Arise, go to Padan Aram, to the house of Bethuel, your mother's father. And take a wife from there of the daughters of Laban, your mother's brother. And may God Almighty bless you and make you fruitful and multiply you, so that you may be a multitude of people. And may he give you the blessing of Abraham to you and to your seed with you, so that you may inherit the land in which you are a stranger, which God gave to Abraham. And Isaac sent Jacob away, and he went to Padam Aram, to Laban, son of Bethuel, the Syrian, the brother of Rebekah, the mother of Jacob and Esau. When Esau saw that Isaac had blessed Jacob and sent him away to Padam Aram, he ordered to take a wife from there, and that he had blessed him, he gave him a command, saying, Ye shall not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan, and that Jacob obeyed his father and his mother, and had gone to Padam Aram. And when Esau saw that the daughters of Canaan did not please Isaac his father, then Esau went to Ishmael, and took Mahalath, the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son, the sister of Nebaioth, unto the wives which he had to be his wife. And Jacob went out from Beersheba, and went up to Haran, and he lighted upon a certain place, and stayed there all night, because the sun had set. And he took of the stones of that place, and put them down for pillows, and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it, and behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, God of Abraham your father, and the God of Isaac, and the land on which you lie I will give to you and to your seed. And your seed shall be like the dust of the earth, and ye shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And in you and in your seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Behold, I am with you and will keep you in every place where you go. And I will bring you again into this land, for I will not leave you until I have done that which I have spoken of unto you. And Jacob awakened from his sleep, and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How fearful is this place! This is none other but the house of God. This is the very gate of heaven. And Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stone which he had put down for his pillow and set it up for a pillar and poured oil on the top of it. And he called the name of the place Bethel. But the name of the city was Luz at first. And Jacob vowed a vow, saying, If God will be with me, 
and will keep me in this way that I go, and will give me bread to eat and clothing to put on, so that I come again unto my father's house in peace. Then shall the Lord be my God. And this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tenth unto thee. Chapter 29, Genesis chapter 29. Then Jacob went on his journey and came to the land of the people of the east. And he looked, and behold, a well in the field. And lo, there were three flocks of sheep lying by it, for they watered the flocks out of the well. And a great stone was upon the well's mouth, and all the flocks were gathered there, and they rolled the stone from the well's mouth, and watered the sheep, and put the stone again upon the well's mouth in its place. And Jacob said to them, My brothers, where are you from? And they said, We are from Haran. And he said to them, Do you know Laban, the son of Nahor? And they said, We know him. And he said to them, Is he well? And they said, He is well. And behold, his daughter Rachel comes with the sheep. And he said, Lo, the day is yet high. It is not time for gathering the cattle together. Water the sheep and go feed them. And they said, We cannot until all the flocks have been gathered together. And they rolled the stone from the well's mouth. Then we water the sheep. And while he still spoke with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, for she kept them. And when Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, then it came to pass that Jacob went near and rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the flocks of Laban, his mother's brother. And Jacob kissed Rachel and lifted up his voice and wept. And Jacob told Rachel that he was her father's brother and that he was Rebekah's son. And she ran and told her father. And when Laban heard the tidings of Jacob, his sister's son, he ran to meet him and embraced him and kissed him and brought him to his house. And he told Laban all these things. And Laban said to him, Surely you are my bone and my flesh. And he stayed with him for a month. And Laban said to Jacob, Because you are my brother, should you then serve me for nothing? Tell me, what shall your wages be? And Laban had two daughters. The name of the oldest was Leah, and the name of the youngest was Rachel. And Leah was weak of eyes, but Rachel was beautiful and well favored. And Jacob loved Rachel and said, I will serve you seven years for Rachel, your younger daughter. And Laban said, It is better that I give you her to you than that I should give her to another man. Stay with me. And so Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed to him but a few days for the love that he had for her. And Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled, so that I may go in unto her. And Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. And in the evening he took his daughter Leah and brought her to him. And he went in unto her, and Laban gave Zilpah his maid to his daughter Leah for a handmaid. And in the morning, behold, it was Leah. And he said to Laban, What is this that you have done to me? Did I not serve with you for Rachel? Why then have you tricked me? And Laban said, It must not be done so in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Fulfill her week, and we will give you this also for the service which you shall serve with me still another seven years. And Jacob did so and fulfilled her week, and he gave him Rachel his daughter to wife also. And Laban gave Bilhah his maid to his daughter Rachel to be her handmaid. And he also went in unto Rachel. He also loved Rachel more than Leah and served with him still seven more years. And when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. And Leah conceived and bore a son, and she called his name Reuben. For she said, Surely the Lord has looked upon my afflictions. Now therefore my husband will love me. And she conceived again and bore a son and said, Because the Lord has heard that I was hated, he has therefore given me this son also. And she called his name Simeon. And she conceived again and bore a son and said, Now this time my husband will return to me because I have borne him three sons. Therefore his name was called Levi. And she conceived again and bore a son. And she said, Now I will praise the Lord. Therefore she called his name Judah and quit bearing. 
chapter 30, Genesis chapter 30. And when Rachel saw that she bore Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister. And she said to Jacob, Give me children, or else I will die. And Jacob's anger was kindled against Rachel, and he said, Am I in God's stead, who has withheld from you the fruit of the womb? And she said, Behold, my maid Bilhah, go in unto her, and she shall bear upon my knees, so that I may also have children by her. And she gave him her handmaid Bilhah to wife. And Jacob went in unto her, and Bilhah conceived and bore Jacob a son. And Rachel said, God has judged me, and has also heard my voice, and has given me a son. Therefore she called his name Dan. And Rachel's maid Bilhah conceived again, and bore Jacob a second son. And Rachel said, With the wrestlings of God I have wrestled with my sister, and I have prevailed. And she called his name Naphtali. When Leah saw that she had quit bearing, she took her maid Zilpah and gave her to Jacob to wife. And Leah's maid Zilpah bore Jacob a son, and Leah said, A troop comes, and she called his name Gad. And Leah's maid Zilpah bore Jacob a second son. And Leah said, I am happy, for the daughters will call me blessed. And she called his name Asher. And Reuben went in the days of the wheat harvest and found May apples in the field and brought them to his mother Leah. Then Rachel said to Leah, I pray you, give me some of your son's May apples. And she said to her, It is a small matter that you have taken my husband, and would you also take my son's May apples? And Rachel said, Therefore he shall lie with you tonight for your son's May apples. And Jacob came out of the field in the evening, and Leah went out to meet him and said, you must come in unto me, for I have surely hired you with my son's may apples. And he lay with her that night, and God listened to Leah, and she conceived and bore Jacob the fifth son. And Leah said, God has given me my hire, because I have given my maid to my husband. And she called his name Issachar. And Leah conceived again and bore Jacob the sixth son. And Leah said, God has presented me with a good dowry. Now my husband will live with me because I have borne him six sons. And she called his name Zebulun. And afterward she bore a daughter and called her name Dinah. And God remembered Rachel, and God listened to her and opened her womb. And she conceived and bore a son, and she said, Now God has taken away my reproach. And she called his name Joseph. And she said, The Lord shall add another son to me. And when Rachel had borne Joseph, it came to pass that Jacob said to Laban, Send me away so that I may go into my own place and to my country. Give me my wives and my children for whom I have served you, and let me go, for you know my service which I have done to you. And Laban said to him, I pray you, if I have found favor in your eyes, stay. For I have learned by experience that the Lord has blessed me for your sake. And he said, Appoint your wages, and I will give it. And he said to him, You know how I served you, and how your cattle were with me. For you had little before I came, and it has now increased to a multitude. And the Lord has blessed you since my coming. And now when shall I provide for my own house also? And he said, What shall I give you? And Jacob said, You shall not give me anything. If you will do this thing for me, I will again feed and keep your flock. I will pass through all the flocks today, taking out all the speckled and spotted sheep, and all of the black sheep among the lambs, and the spotted and the speckled among the goats. And these shall be my hire. So shall my righteousness answer for me in time to come, and it shall come for my hire before your face. Every one that is not speckled and spotted amongst the goats, and black among the sheep, shall be counted stolen with me. And Laban said, Behold, let it be according to your word. And that day he took out the he-goats that were striped and spotted, and all the she-goats that were speckled and spotted, every one that had white in it, and all the black from among the lambs, and gave them into the hand of his sons. And he set three days' journey between himself and Jacob. And Jacob fed the rest of Laban's flocks. And Jacob took rods of green poplar, and of the hazel and the chestnut tree, 
and he peeled white streaks in them and made the white appear which was in the rods. And he set the rods which he had peeled before the flocks in the gutters in the watering troughs when the flocks came to drink, so that they should conceive when they came to drink. And the flocks conceived in front of the rods and brought forth striped cattle speckled and spotted. And Jacob separated the lambs and set the faces of the flocks toward the striped and all the black in the flock of Laban. And he put his own flocks by themselves and did not put them with the flock of Laban. And when the stronger flocks conceived, Jacob laid the rods before the eyes of the flocks in the gutters so that they might conceive among the rods. But when the flocks were feeble, he did not put them in. And so the feebler ones were Laban's and the stronger ones were Jacob's. And the man increased exceedingly, and had many flocks, and made servants, and manservants, and camels, and asses. Genesis chapter 31. And he heard the words of Laban's son, saying, Jacob has taken away all that was our father's, and he has gotten all this glory from that which was our father's. And Jacob saw the countenance of Laban, and behold, it was not toward him as before. And the Lord said to Jacob, Return to the land of your fathers and to your kindred, and I will be with you. And Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah to the field to his flocks. And he said to them, I see your father's face, that it is not toward me as before. But the God of my father has been with me, and you know that with all my power I have served your father. And your father has deceived me and changed my wages ten times. But God did not allow him to hurt me. If he said, This, the speckled, shall be your wages, then all the flocks bore speckled. And if he said, This, the striped, shall be your hire, then all the flocks bore striped. And so God has taken away the flocks of your father and has given them to me. And at the time the cattle conceived, I lifted up my eyes and saw in a dream, and behold, the rams which leaped upon the cattle were striped, speckled, and mottled. And the angel of God spoke to me in a dream, saying, Jacob, and I said, Here I am. And he said, Lift up your eyes and see all the rams which leap upon the cattle, that they are striped, speckled, and mottled. For I have seen all that Laban does to you. I am the God of Bethel, where you anointed the pillar, where you vowed a vow to me. Now arise and get out from this land and return to the land of your kindred. And Rachel and Leah answered and said to him, Is there yet any portion or inheritance for us in our father's house? Are we not counted strangers by him? For he has sold us and has also entirely devoured our money. For all the riches which God has taken from our father, that is ours and our children's. Now then, whatever God has said to you, do. Then Jacob rose up and set his sons and wives upon camels, and he carried away all his flocks and all his goods which he had gotten, the cattle of his getting which he had gotten at Padam Aram, in order to go to Isaac his father in the land of Canaan. And Laban went to shear his sheep, and Rachel had stolen the images which were her father's. And Jacob stole away the heart of Laban the Syrian, in that he did not tell him that he fled. And so he fled with all that he had, and he rose up and passed over the river and set his face toward Mount Gilead. And it was told Laban on the third day that Jacob had fled, and he took his brothers with him and pursued after him seven days' journey, and they overtook him in Mount Gilead. And God came to Laban the Syrian in a dream by night and said to him, Take heed that you do not speak either good or bad to Jacob. Then Laban overtook Jacob. Now Jacob had pitched his tent in the mount, and Laban with his brothers pitched in Mount Gilead. And Laban said to Jacob, What have you done that you have stolen away my heart and carried away my daughters as captives taken with the sword? Why did you flee away secretly and steal away from me, and did not tell me so that I might have sent you away with mirth and with songs and with tabray and with harp? And why have you not allowed me to kiss my sons and my daughters? You have done foolishly in so doing. It is the power of my hand to do you harm. But the God of your father spoke to me last night, saying, Take heed that you do not speak either good or bad to Jacob. 
and now you have gone because you longed after your father's house. But why have you stolen my goods? And Jacob answered and said to Laban, Because I was afraid, for I said perhaps you have, would take your daughters away from me by force. With whomever you find your gods, let him not live. Before our brothers choose what is yours with me and take it to you, for Jacob did not know that Rachel had stolen them. And Laban went into Jacob's tent and into Leah's tent and into the tents of the two maidservants, and he did not find them. And he went out of Leah's tent and entered into Rachel's tent. Now Rachel had taken the images and put them into the camel's saddle and sat on them. And Laban searched all the tent but did not find them. But she said to her father, Let it not displease my lord that I cannot rise up before you, for the custom of women is upon me. And he searched, but did not find the images. And Jacob was angry and rebuked Laban. And Jacob answered and said to Laban, What is my trespass? What is my sin that you have so hotly pursued after me? For you have searched all my stuff. What have you found of all your household stuff? Set it here before my brothers and your brothers, that they may judge between us. I was with you twenty years. Your ewes and she-goats have not cast their young, and the rams of your flocks I have not eaten. That which was torn I did not bring to you. I bore the loss of it. You required it at my hand, whether stolen by day or stolen at night. So I was in the day the heat consumed me, and the frost by night, and my sleep departed from my eyes. So I have been twenty years in your house. I served you fourteen years for your two daughters, and six for your flocks, and you have changed my wages ten times. Unless the God of my fathers, the God of Abraham, and the fear of Isaac had been with me, surely you would have sent me away empty. God has seen my affliction and the labor of my hands and rebuked you last night. And Laban answered and said to Jacob, These daughters are my daughters, and these children are my children, and these flocks are my flocks. All that you see is mine. And what can I do this day to those my daughters, or to their children, which they have borne. Now therefore come, let us make a covenant, you and I, and let it be for a witness between you and me. And Jacob took a stone and set it up for a pillar. And Jacob said to his brothers, Come, gather stones. And they took stones and made a heap, and they ate there upon the heap. And Laban called it Jigar Sahadutha, but Jacob called it Galid. And Laban said, The heap is a witness between you and me this day. Therefore the name of it was called Galid and Mizpah. For he said, The Lord watch between you and me when we are absent from one another. If you shall afflict my daughter, or if you shall take other wives besides my daughters, no man is with us. See, God is witness between you and me. And Laban said to Jacob, Behold this heap, behold this pillar, which I have cast between you and me. This heap is witness, and this pillar is witness, that I will not pass over the heap to you, and that you shall not pass over this heap and this pillar to me for harm. The God of Abraham, the God of Nahor, the God of their father, judge between us. And Jacob swore by the fear of his father Isaac, then Jacob offered sacrifice on the mountain and called his brothers to eat bread. And they ate bread and stayed all night in the mountain. And early in the morning Laban rose up and kissed his sons and his daughters and blessed them. And Laban departed and returned to his place. Genesis chapter 32. Genesis chapter 32. And Jacob went on his way, and the angels of God met him. And when Jacob saw them, he said, This is God's host. And he called the name of the place Mehanaim. And Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau, his brother, to the land of Seir, the country of Edom. And he commanded them, saying, So shall you speak to my lord Esau. Your servant Jacob says thus, I have lived with Laban and stayed until now. And I have oxen and asses and flocks and men servants and women servants. And I have sent to tell my lord that I may find grace in your sight. And the messengers returned to Jacob, saying, We came to your brother Esau, and also he comes to meet you. 
and 400 men with him. Then Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed, and he divided the people that were with him, the flocks and the herds and the camels, into two bands. And he said, If Esau comes to the one company and strikes it, then the other company which is left shall escape. And Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham, and God of my father Isaac, the Lord who said to me, Return unto your country and to your kindred, and I will deal with you. I am not worthy of the least of all the mercies and of all the truth which thou hast shown thy servant. For with my staff I passed over this Jordan, and now I have become two bands. Deliver me, I pray thee, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau. For I fear him, lest he come and strike me and the mother with the children. And thou didst say, I will surely do you good, and make your seed as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered for multitude. And he lodged there that night, and he took of that which came to his hand a present for Esau his brother, two hundred she-goats, twenty he-goats, two hundred ewes and twenty rams, thirty milk camels with their colts, and forty cows and ten bulls, twenty she-asses and ten foals. And he delivered them into the hands of his servants, every drove by themselves. And he said to his servants, Pass over in front of me, and put a space between drove and drove. And he commanded the foremost, saying, When Esau my brother meets you, and asks you, saying, To whom do you belong, and where do you go, and to whom do these be before you belong, then you shall say, Your servant Jacob. It is a present sent to my lord Esau. And behold, he also is behind us. And so he commanded the second and the third and all that followed, the drove, saying, In this way ye shall speak to Esau when you find him. And moreover you shall say, Behold, your servant Jacob is behind us. For he said, I will appease him with the present that goes before me, and afterward I will see his face. Perhaps he will accept me. And so the present went over before him, and he himself lodged that night in the company. And he rose up that night and took his two wives and his two women servants and his eleven sons and passed over the ford Jabbok. And he took them and set them over the brook and sent over what he had. And Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled there with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaks. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For like a prince you have power with God and with men, and have prevailed. And Jacob asked and said, I pray thee, tell me thy name. And he said, Why is it that you ask after my name? And he blessed him there, and Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. For I have seen God's face here face to face, and my life is preserved. And as he passed over Penuel, the sun rose upon him, and he limped upon his thigh. Therefore the children of Israel do not eat of the sinew which shrank which is upon the hollow of the thigh until this day, because he touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh in the sinew that shrank. Chapter 33. Genesis chapter 33. And Jacob lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, Esau came and four hundred men with him. And he divided the children unto Leah and unto Rachel and unto two handmaids, and he put the handmaids and their children first, and Leah and her children afterward and Rachel and Joseph last. And he passed over in front of them, and bowed himself to the ground seven times, until he came near to his brother. And Esau ran to meet him, and embraced him, and fell upon his neck, and kissed him. And they wept. And he lifted up his eyes, and saw the women and the children, and said, Who are these with you? And he said, The children which God has graciously given your servant. Then the handmaidens came near, they and their children, and they bowed themselves. And Leah also and her children came near and bowed themselves. And afterward Joseph came near, and Rachel, and they bowed themselves. 
And he asked, What do you mean by all this drove which I met? And he said, These are to find grace in the sight of my Lord. And Esau says, I have enough, my brother. Keep what you have yourself. And Jacob said, No, I pray you, if now I have found grace in your sight, then receive my present at my hand. For therefore have I seen your face as though I had seen the face of God, and you were pleased with me. I pray you, take my blessing that is brought to you, because God has dealt graciously with me, and because I have enough. And he urged him, and he took it, and he said, Let us take our journey, and let us go, and I will go before you. And he said to him, My Lord knows that the children are tender, and the flocks and the herds with young are with me. And if the men should overdrive them one day, all the flocks will die. I pray you, let my Lord pass over before his servants, and I will lead on softly according as the flocks that go before me and the children are able to endure until I come to my Lord to Seir. And Esau said, Let me now leave with you some of the folks that are with me. And he said, Why then? Let me find grace in the sight of my Lord. And so Esau returned that day on his way to Seir, and Jacob journeyed to Succoth, and built him a house, and made booths for his cattle. Therefore the name of the place is called Succoth. And Jacob came to Shalem, a city of Shechem, which is in the land of Canaan, when he came from Padam Aram. And he pitched his tent in front of the city, and he bought a piece of a field there, where he had spread his tent at the hand of the children of Hamor, Shechem's father, for a hundred pieces of money. And he erected there an altar, and he called it Eliel Ohi Israel. Chapter 34. Genesis chapter 34. And Dinah, the daughter of Leah, whom she bore unto Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. And when Shechem, the son of Hamor, the Hevite, prince of the country, saw her, he took her and lay with her and defiled her. And his soul did cleave unto Dinah, the daughter of Jacob, and he loved the girl and spoke kindly to the girl. And Shechem spoke to his father Hamor, saying, Get me this girl for a wife. And Jacob heard that he had defiled Dinah his daughter. Now his sons were with his cattle in the field, and Jacob held his peace until they had come. And Hamor, the father of Shechem, went out to Jacob to speak with him. And the sons of Jacob came out of the field when they heard, and the men were grieved, and they were very angry, because he had done folly in Israel in lying with the daughter of Jacob. Now this thing ought not to be done. And Hamor communed with them, saying, The soul of my son Shechem longs for your daughter. I pray you give her to him for a wife. And you make marriages with us, giving your daughters to us, and taking our daughters unto you. And you shall live with us and the land shall be before you. Live and trade in it, and get possessions in it. And Shechem said to his father and to his brother, Let me find grace in your eyes, and whatever you shall say unto me I will give. Heap upon me ever so much price and dowry, and I will give according as you shall say unto me. But give me the girl for a wife. And the sons of Jacob answered Shechem and Hamor his father, speaking with deceit, because he had defiled Dinah their sister. And they said to them, We cannot do this thing to give our sister to one that is uncircumcised, for that would be a reproach to us. But in this we will agree with you, if you will be as we are, that every male of you be circumcised, then we will give our daughters to you, and we will take your daughters to us, and we will live with you, and we will become one people." But if you will not listen to us to be circumcised, then we will take our daughter and we will go. And their words pleased Hamor and Shechem, Hamor's son. And the young man did not hesitate to do the thing because he had delight in Jacob's daughter, and he was more honorable than all the house of his father. And Hamor and Shechem, his son, came to the gate of the city and talked with the men of the city, saying, These men are at peace with us. Therefore let them live in the land and trade in it. For the land, behold, is large enough for them. Let us take their daughters to us for wives, and let us give them our daughters. Only on this condition will the men agree to live with us, to be one people, 
if every male among us is circumcised as they are circumcised? Shall not their cattle and their substance and every animal of theirs be ours? Only let us agree with them, and they will live with us. And all that went out of the gate of the city listened to Hamor and Shechem his son, and every male was circumcised, all that went out of the gate of his city. And it came to pass on the third day when they were sore that two of the sons of Jacob, Simeon and Levi, Dinah's brothers, took each man his sword and came upon the city boldly and killed all the males. And they killed Hamor and Shechem his son with the edge of the sword and took Dinah out of Shechem's house and went out. The sons of Jacob came upon the slain and spoiled the city because they had defiled their sister. And they took their sheep and their oxen and their asses and that which was in the city and that which was in the field and all their wealth and all their little ones and their wives. They took captive and spoiled even all that was in the house. And Jacob said to Simeon and Levi, Ye have troubled me to make me to stink among the inhabitants of the land, among the Canaanites and the Perizzites, and I being few in number, they shall gather themselves together against me, and slay me, and I shall be destroyed, I and my house. And they said, Should he deal with our sister as with an harlot? Genesis, the first book of the Bible, chapter 35. And God said to Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel, and live there, and make an altar there to God who appeared to you when you fled from the face of Esau your brother. Then Jacob said to his household and to all that were with him, Put away the strange gods that are among you, and be clean, and change your garments. And let us arise and go up to Bethel, and I will make an altar there unto God, who answered me in the day of my distress, and was with me in the way which I went. And they gave all the strange gods which were in their hands to Jacob, and the earrings which were in their ears, and Jacob hid them under the oak which was by Shechem. And they journeyed, and the terror of God was upon the cities that were around about them, and they did not pursue after the sons of Jacob. And so Jacob came to Luz, which is in the land of Canaan, that is, Bethel, he and all the people that were with him. And he built an altar there and called the name of the place El Bethel, because God appeared to him when he fled from the face of his brother there. But Deborah, Rebekah's nurse, died, and she was buried beneath Bethel under an oak. And the name of it was called Elan Bachkuth. And God appeared to Jacob again when he came out of Padam Aram and blessed him. And God said to him, Your name is Jacob. Your name shall not be called Jacob any more, but Israel shall be your name. And he called his name Israel, and God said to him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall be from you, and kings shall come out of your loins. And the land which I gave unto Abraham and Isaac I will give to you, and to your seed after you I will give the land. And God went up from him in the place where he talked with him. And Jacob set up a pillar in the place where he talked with him, a pillar of stone. And he poured a drink offering on it, and he poured oil on it. And Jacob called the name of the place where God spoke to him, Bethel. And they journeyed from Bethel, and there was only a little way to come to Ephrath. And Rachel travailed, and she had hard labor. And it came to pass when that she was in hard labor that the midwife said to her, Do not fear, you shall have this son also. And it came to pass as her soul was departing, for she died, that she called his name Benoni, but his father called him Benjamin. And Rachel died and was buried in the way to Ephrath, which is Bethlehem. And Jacob set up a pillar upon her grave, and that is the pillar of Rachel's grave unto this day. And Israel journeyed and spread his tent beyond the tower of Edar, and went, when Israel lived in that land, Reuben went by and lay with Bilhah, his father's concubine. And Israel heard it. Now the sons of Jacob were twelve. The sons of Leah were Reuben, Jacob's firstborn, and Simeon, and Levi, and Judah, and Issachar, and Zebulun. 
The sons of Rachel were Joseph and Benjamin. And the sons of Bilhah, Rachel's handmaid, were Dan and Naphtali. And the sons of Zilpah, Leah's handmaid, were Gad and Asher. These are the sons of Jacob, which were born to him in Padan Aram. And Jacob came unto Isaac his father, unto Mamre, unto the city of Arba, which is Hebron, where Abraham and Isaac had lived. And the days of Isaac were a hundred and eighty years. And Isaac gave up the spirit and died, and was gathered unto his people, old and full of days. And his son Esau and Jacob buried him. We're reading Genesis 36, the descendants of Esau. Genesis 36. Now these are the generations of Esau, who was Edom. Esau took his wives of the daughters of Canaan, Adah, the daughter of Elon the Hittite, and Aholibana, the daughter of Anah, the daughter of Zibion the Hevite, and Bashamoth, Ishmael's daughter, sister of Nebajoth. And Adah bare to Esau Eliphaz, and Bashamoth bare Reuel. And Ahalabama bare Jeosh, and Jalam, and Korah. These are the sons of Esau, which were born unto him in the land of Canaan. And Esau took his wives, and his sons, and his daughters, and all the persons of his house, and his cattle, and all his beasts, and all his substance, which he had got in the land of Canaan, and went into the country from the face of his brother Jacob. For their riches were more than that they might dwell together, and the land wherein they were strangers could not bear them because of their cattle. Thus dwelt Esau in Mount Seir. Esau is Edom. And these are the generations of Esau, the father of the Edomites in Mount Seir. These are the names of Esau's sons, Eliphaz, the son of Adah, the wife of Esau, Reuel, the son of Bushamoth, the wife of Esau. And the sons of Eliphaz were Taman, Omar, Zepho, Gatam, and Kenaz. And Timnah was concubine to Eliphaz, Esau's son, and she bare to Eliphaz Amalek. These were the sons of Adah, Esau's wife. And these are the sons of Reuel, Nahath, and Zerah, Shammah, and Mizah. These were the sons of Bashamath, Esau's wife. And these were the sons of Aholibama, the daughter of Enah, the daughter of Zibion, Esau's wife. And she bare to Esau Jeush, and Jalam, and Korah. These were dukes of the sons of Esau, the sons of Eliphaz, the firstborn son of Esau, Duke Taman, Duke Omar, Duke Zepho, Duke Kenaz. Duke Korah, Duke Gatam, and Duke Amalek, these are the dukes that came of Eliphaz in the land of Edom. These were the sons of Ada, And these are the sons of Reuel, Esau's son, Duke Nahath, Duke Zereth, Duke Shammah, Duke Misa. These are the dukes that came of Reuel in the land of Edom. These are the sons of Bashamath, Esau's wife. And these are the sons of Aholibama, Esau's wife. Duke Jeush, Duke Jehalam, Duke Korah. These were the dukes that came of Aholibama, the daughter of Anna, Esau's wife. These are the sons of Esau, who is Edom, and these are their dukes. These are the sons of Seir, the Horite, who inhabited the land. Lotan and Shobal and Zibion, and Ena, and Dishon, and Ezer, and Dishon. These are the dukes of the Horites, the children of Seir in the land of Edom. And the children of Lotan were Horai, and Hamam, and Lotan's sister was Timnah. And the children of Shobal were these, Alvan, and Manahath, and Ebal, Shepho, and Onam. And these are the children of Zibion, both Aja and Anna. And this was the Anna that found the mules in the wilderness as he fed the asses of Zibion his father. 
And the children of Anna were these, Dishan and Aholibamah, the daughter of Amma. And these are the children of Dishan, Hemdan and Eshban and Ithran and Sheran. The children of Azar are these, Bilhan and Zavan and Akan. The children of Dishan are these, Uz and Aran. These are the dukes that came of the Horites, Duke Lotan, Duke Shobal, Duke Zibion, Duke Anna, Duke Dishan, Duke Azar, Duke Dishan. These are the dukes that came of Horai, among their dukes in the land of Seir. And these are the kings that reigned in the land of Edom, before there reigned any king over the children of Israel. And Bela, the son of Beor, reigned in Edom. And the name of his city was Dinhaba. And Bela died. And Jobab, the son of Zerah, of Bozrah, reigned in his stead. And Jobab died, and Husham of the land of Tumani reigned in his stead. And Husham died, and Hadad, the son of Bedad, who smote Midian in the field of Moab, reigned in his stead, and the name of his city was Avith. And Hadad died, and Samla of Masrika reigned in his stead. And Samla died, and Saul of Rehoboth by the river reigned in his stead. And Saul died, and Baal Hanan, the son of Achbor, reigned in his stead. And Baal Hanan, the son of Achbar, died, and Hadar reigned in his stead, and the name of his city was Pau, and his wife's name was Mehetabel, and the daughter of Matred, the daughter of Mesahab. And these are the names of the dukes that came of Esau, according to their families after their places, by their names, Duke Timnah, Duke Alva, Duke Jetheth, Duke Aholibama, Duke Elah, Duke Pinon, Duke Kenaz, Duke Taman, Duke Mibzar, Duke Magdiel, Duke Iram. These are the dukes of Edom, according to their habitations in the land of their possession. He is Esau, the father of the Edomites. Genesis chapter 37. And Jacob lived in the land in which his father was a stranger, in the land of Canaan. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being seventeen years old, was feeding the flock with his brothers, and the boy was with the son of Bilhah and with the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought to his father an evil report of them. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children, because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a coat of many colors, and when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, They hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. And Joseph dreamed a dream and told it to his brothers, and they hated him still more. And he said to them, I pray you, hear this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood round about and bowed down to my sheaf. And his brother said to him, Shall you indeed reign over us? Or shall you indeed have the rule over us? And they hated him still more for his dreams and for his words. And he dreamed still another dream and told it to his brothers. And he said, Behold, I have dreamed another dream. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars bowed down to me. And he told it to his father and to his brothers. And his father rebuked him and said to him, What is this dream that you have dreamed? Shall I and your mother and your brothers indeed come to bow down ourselves to the earth before you? And his brothers were jealous of him. But his father observed the saying. And his brothers went to feed his father's flock in Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, Do not your brothers feed in Shechem? Come, and I will send you to them. And he said to him, Here am I. And he said to him, I pray you, go see whether it is well with your brothers and well with the flocks, and bring me word again. And so he sent him out of the valley of Hebron, and he came to Shechem. And a certain man found him, and behold, he was wandering in the field. 
And the man asked him, saying, What are you looking for? And he said, I am looking for my brothers. Tell me, I pray you, where do they feed? And the man said, They are gone from here, for I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. And Joseph went after his brothers and found them in Dothan. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near them, they conspired against him to kill him. And they said to one another, Behold, this dreamer comes. Therefore come now and let us kill him and throw him into some pit. And we will say that some evil beast has devoured him. And we shall see what will become of his dreams. And Reuben heard it, and he delivered him out of their hands and said, Let us not kill him. And Reuben said to them, Shed no blood, throw him into this pit that is in the wilderness, and lay no hand upon him, so that he might rescue him out of their hands to deliver him to his father again. And when Joseph had come to his brothers, they stripped Joseph out of his coat, the coat of many colors that was on him, and they took him and threw him into a pit. And the pit was empty with no water in it. And they sat down to eat bread, and they lifted up their eyes and looked, and behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead with their camels, bearing spices and balm and myrrh, going to carry it down to Egypt. And Judah said to his brothers, What profit is it if we should kill our brother and hide his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites. And let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh. And his brothers listened. Then these passed by the Midianites, who were merchantmen, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit. And they sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for twenty pieces of silver, and they brought Joseph into Egypt. And Reuben returned to the pit, and behold, Joseph was not in the pit, and he tore his clothes. And he returned to his brothers and said, The child no longer is, and I, where shall I go? And they took Joseph's coat and killed a kid of the goats and dipped the coat in the blood. And they sent the coat of many colors, and they brought it to their father. And they said, We have found this. Do you know whether it is your son's coat or not? And he knew it and said, It is my son's coat. An evil beast has eaten him. Joseph is without doubt torn in pieces. And Jacob tore his clothes and put sackcloth upon his loins and mourned for his son many days. And all his sons and all his daughters rose up to comfort him. But he refused to be comforted. And he said, For I will go down into the grave to my son mourning. And so his father wept for him. And the Midianites sold him into Egypt unto Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh's and captain of the guard. Genesis chapter 38. And at that time Judah went down from his brothers and turned into a certain Adulamite whose name was Hira. And Judah saw there a daughter of a certain Canaanite whose name was Shua. And he took her and went into her, and she conceived and bore a son, and he called his name Er. And she conceived again and bore a son, and she called his name Onan. And she yet conceived and bore a son, and she called his name Shelah. And she was at Shezib when she bore him. And Judah took a wife for Ur, his firstborn, whose name was Tamar. And Ur, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord killed him. And Judah said to Onan, Go in unto your brother's wife, and marry her, and raise up seed to your brother. And Onan knew that the seed would not be his. And it came to pass when he went into his brother's wife that he spilled on the ground, lest he should give seed to his brother. And the thing which he did was evil in the eyes of the Lord, and therefore he killed him also. Then said Judah to Tamar, his daughter-in-law, Remain a widow at your father's house until Shelah, my son, is grown. For he said, Lest perhaps he die also as his brothers did. And Tamar went and lived in her father's house. And as many days went by, Judah's wife, the daughter of Shua, died. And Judah was comforted and went up to his sheep shear to Timnath, he and his friend Hira, the Adalamite. And it was told to Tamar, saying, Behold, your father-in-law goes up to Timnath to shear his sheep. And she put off her widow's clothes and covered herself with a veil and wrapped herself. And she sat in an open place, which is by the way to Timnath. 
And she saw that Shelah was grown, and she was not given to him as wife. And when Judah saw her, he thought she was a harlot, because she had covered her face. And he turned aside to her by the wayside, and said, Come, I pray you, let me come in unto you. For he did not know that she was his daughter-in-law. And she said, What will you give me, so that you may come in unto me? And he said, I will send a kid from the flock. And she said, Will you give me a pledge until you send it? And he said, What pledge shall I give you? And she said, Your signet, and your bracelet, and your staff that is in your hand. And he gave it to her, and came in unto her, and she conceived by him. And she arose, and went away, and laid away her veil from her, and put on the clothes of her widowhood. And Judah sent the kid by the hand of his friend, the Adulamite, to receive his pledge from the woman's hand, but he could not find her. Then he asked the man of the place, saying, Where is the harlot who was openly by the wayside? And they said, There was no harlot here. And he returned to Judah and said, I cannot find her. And also the men of the place said, There was no harlot here. And Judah said, Let her take it to her, lest we be ashamed. Behold, I sent this kid, and you have not found her. And it came to pass after three months afterward that it was told Judah, saying, Your daughter-in-law Tamar has played the harlot, and also, behold, she is with child by whoredom. And Judah said, Bring her forth, and let her be burned. And when she was brought forth, she sent to her father-in-law, saying, I am with child by the man whose things these are. And she said, I pray you, observe whose things are these, the signet and bracelets and staff. And Judah acknowledged them and said, She has been more righteous than I have, because I did not give Sheila my son to her. And he never knew her again. And in the time of her travail, behold, twins were in her womb. And when she travailed, it came to pass that one put out his hand, and the midwife took and bound upon his hand a scarlet thread, saying, This came out first. And as he drew back his hand, it came to pass that, behold, his brother came out. And she said, How have you torn a break for yourself? Therefore his name was called Pharez. And afterward his brother came out, who had the scarlet thread upon his hand, and his name was called Zara. Chapter 39. We're reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 39. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him from the hands of the Ishmaelites, who had brought him down there. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him, and he made him overseer over his house, and he put into his hand all that he had. And it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer in his house and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand. And he did not know anything that he had except the bread which he ate. And Joseph was beautiful in form and appearance. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph, and she said, Lie with me. But he refused and said to his master's wife, Behold, my master does not know what is with me in the house, and he has given all that he has into my hand. There is none greater in this house than I am. Neither has he kept back anything from me except you, because you are his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? And it came to pass, as she spoke to Joseph day by day, that he did not listen to her, to lie with her or to be with her. And it came to pass about this time that he came into the house to do his work. And none of the men of the house were inside, and she caught him by his robe, saying, Lie with me. And he left his robe in her hand and fled and got out. And it came to pass, when she saw that he had left his robe in her hand and had fled, she called to the men of her house and spoke to them, saying, See, he has brought in a Hebrew to us to mock us. 
he came into me to lie with me, and I cried with a loud voice. And when he heard that, I lifted up my voice and cried, and he left his robe with me and fled and got out. And she laid up, up his robe beside her until his Lord came home. And she spoke to him according to these words, saying, The Hebrew servant which you have brought to us came in to me to mock me. And it came to pass, as I lifted up my voice and cried, that he left his robe with me and ran out. And when his master heard the words of his wife, which he spoke to him, saying, Your servant did this to me, his wrath was kindled. And Joseph's master took him and put him in prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound, and he was there in the prison. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison gave all the prisoners that were in the prison into Joseph's hand. And whatever they did there, he was the doer of it. The keeper of the prison did not look to anything under his hand because the Lord was with him. And whatever he did, the Lord made it to prosper. Chapter 40, Genesis chapter 40. And after these things it came to pass that the butler of the king of Egypt and his baker had offended their lord, the king of Egypt. And Pharaoh was angry against two of his officers, against the chief of the butlers and against the chief of the bakers. And he put them under guard in the house of the captain of the guard into the prison, the place where Joseph was bound. And the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them, and he served them, and they continued for a time under guard. And they dreamed a dream, both of them, each man his dream in one night, each man according to the interpretation of his dream, the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt, who were bound in the prison. And Joseph came into them in the morning and looked upon them, and behold, they were sad. And he asked Pharaoh's officers who were with him under guard in his lord's house, saying, Why do you look so sad today? And they said to him, We have dreamed a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. And Joseph said to them, Do not interpretations belong to God? I pray you, tell me. And the chief butler told his dream to Joseph and said to him, In my dream, behold, a vine was before me, and in the vine were three branches, and it was as if it budded, and its blossoms shot forth, and the clusters of it brought forth ripe grapes. And Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup, and I gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. And Joseph said to him, This is the interpretation of it. The three branches are three days. Yet within three days Pharaoh shall lift up your head and restore you to your place, and you shall deliver Pharaoh's cup into his hand, just as you did when you were his butler. But think on me when it is well with you, and I pray you show kindness unto me, and make mention of me to Pharaoh, and bring me out of this house. For indeed I was stolen away out of the land of the Hebrews, and here also I have done nothing that they should put me into this dungeon. And when the chief baker saw the interpretation was good, he said to Joseph, I also was in my dream, and behold, three white baskets were on my head, and in the top basket was all kinds of baked foods for Pharaoh, and the birds ate them out of the basket upon my head. And Joseph answered and said, This is the interpretation of it. The three baskets are three days. Yet within three days Pharaoh shall lift up your head from off you, and shall hang you on a tree, and the birds shall eat your flesh from off you. And it came to pass the third day, Pharaoh's birthday, that he made a feast to all his servants, and he lifted up the head of the chief butler and the chief baker among his servants. And he restored the chief butler back into his butlership again. And he gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. But he hanged the chief baker even as Joseph had interpreted to them. Yet the chief butler did not remember Joseph, but forgot him. Genesis chapter 41. And it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed, and behold, he stood by the river. And behold, there came up out of the river seven cows, beautiful in appearance, and fat of flesh. And they fed in a meadow, and behold, seven other cows came up after them out of the river, evil in appearance, and lean of flesh. And they stood by the other cows upon the brink of the river, and the evil appearing and lean fleshed cows ate up the seven beautiful appearing and fat cows. 
And so Pharaoh awoke. And he slept and dreamed the second time, and behold, seven ears of corn came up on one stalk, fat and good. And behold, seven thin ears and blasted with the east wind sprang up after them. And the seven thin ears devoured the seven fat and full ears. And Pharaoh awoke, and behold, it was a dream. And it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled, and he sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt and all the wise men of it. And Pharaoh told them his dream, but there was none who could interpret them to Pharaoh. Then the chief butler spoke to Pharaoh, saying, I remember my fault this day. Pharaoh was angry with his servants and put me under guard in the captain of the guard's house, me and the chief baker. And we dreamed a dream one night. He and I, we dreamed each man according to the interpretation of his dream. And there was there amongst us a young man, a Hebrew, a servant to the captain of the guard. And we told him, and he interpreted our dreams to us. He interpreted to each man according to his dream, and he has interpreted to us, so it was. He restored me to my office, and he hanged him. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him out of the dungeon. And he shaved and changed his clothing and came in unto Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard it said of you that you can understand a dream to interpret it. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, In my dream, behold, I stood upon the bank of the river. And behold, there came up out of the river seven cows, beautiful in appearance and fat of flesh. And they fed in a meadow. And behold, seven other cows came up after them, poor and evil of appearance, and lean of flesh, such as I never saw in all the land of Egypt for badness. And the lean and evil-appearing cows did eat up the first seven fat cows. And when they had eaten them up, it could not be known that they had eaten them, but they were still evil of appearance, as at the beginning. And so I awoke. And I saw in my dream, and behold, seven ears came up in one stock, full and good. And behold, seven ears withered, thin, blasted with the east wind, sprang up after them. And the thin ears devoured the seven good ears. And I told this to the magicians, but there was none that could open it to me. And Joseph said to Pharaoh, The dream of Pharaoh is one. God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good cows are seven years, and the seven good ears are seven years. The dream is one, and the seven thin and evil-appearing cows that came up after them are seven years, and the seven empty ears blasted with the east wind shall be seven years of famine. This is a thing which God has spoken to Pharaoh, what God is about to do. He shows to Pharaoh, Behold, there comes seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt, and there shall arise after them seven years of famine, and all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt, and the famine shall consume the land, and the plenty shall not be known in the land because of the famine following, for it shall be very grievous. And since the dream was doubled to Pharaoh twice, it is because the thing is established by God, and God will shortly bring it to pass. Now therefore let Pharaoh look for a man who is discreet and wise, and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do this, and let him appoint officers over the land, and take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt in the seven plenteous years, and let them gather all the food of those good years that come, and lay up grain under the hand of Pharaoh, and let them keep food in the cities. That food shall be for a store to the land against the seven years of famine, which shall be in the land of Egypt, so that the land does not perish through the famine. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. And Pharaoh said to his servants, Can we find anyone like this, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? And Pharaoh said to Joseph, Since God has showed you all this, no man is as discreet and wise as you are. You shall be over my house, and all my people shall be ruled according to your word. Only in the throne will I be greater than you are. 
And Pharaoh said to Joseph, See, I have set you over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand. And he dressed him in clothing of fine linen and put a gold chain around his neck. And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. And they cried before him, Bow the knee. And he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without you shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh called Joseph's name zaphnath Paaniah, And he gave him for his wife Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar, priest of On. And Joseph went out over all the land of Egypt. And Joseph was thirty years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout all the land of Egypt. And in the seven years of plenty the earth brought forth by handfuls. And he gathered up all the food of the seven years which were in the land of Egypt and laid up food in the cities. He laid up the food of the field which was round about every city in the same city. And Joseph gathered grain like the sand of the sea, very much until he quit numbering it, for it was without number. And two sons were born unto Joseph before the years of famine came, whom Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar, prince of On, bore him. And Joseph called the name of the first son Manasseh, for he says, God has made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. And the name of the second he called Ephraim, for he said, God has caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. And the seven years of plenty that was in the land of Egypt were ended, and the seven years of famine began to come, according as Joseph had said. And the famine was in all the land, but in all the land of Egypt there was bread. When all the land of Egypt was famished, the people cried to Pharaoh for bread, and Pharaoh said to all the Egyptians, Go to Joseph, and what he says to you do. And the famine was over all the face of the earth, and Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold to the Egyptians. And the famine became sore in the land of Egypt. And all countries came into Egypt to Joseph because the famine was so sore in all the land. Chapter 42, Genesis chapter 42. Now when Jacob saw that there was grain in Egypt, Jacob said to his son, Why do you look upon one another? And he said, Behold, I have heard that there is grain in Egypt. Go down there and buy for us from there, so that we may live and not die. And Joseph's ten brothers went down to buy grain in Egypt. But Benjamin, Joseph's brother, Jacob, did not send with his brother. For he said, Lest perhaps mischief befall him. And the sons of Israel came to buy among those that came, for the famine was in the land of Canaan. And Joseph was the governor over the land. He was the one that sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brothers came and bowed down themselves before him with their faces to the earth. And Joseph saw his brothers, and he knew them, but made himself strange to them and spoke roughly to them. And he said to them, Where do you come from? And they said, From the land of Canaan to buy food. And Joseph knew his brothers, but they did not know him. And Joseph remembered the dreams which he dreamed of them and said to them, You are spies, you have come to see the nakedness of the land. And they said to him, No, my lord, but your servants have come to buy food. We are all one man's sons. We are honest, your servants are not spies. And he said to them, No, but you have come to see the nakedness of the land. And they said, Your servants are twelve brothers, the sons of one man in the land of Canaan. And behold, the youngest is this day with our father, and one is not. And Joseph said to them, That is what I spoke to you, saying, You are spies. By this ye shall be proved. By the life of Pharaoh you shall not go forth from here unless your youngest brother comes here. Send one of you, and let him bring your brother, and you shall be kept in prison, so that your words may be proved, whether any truth is in you or else by the life of Pharaoh surely you are spies. And he put them all together into ward three days. And Joseph said to them the third day, Do this and live, for I fear God. 
If you are honest, let one of your brothers be bound in the house of your prison. You go carry grain for the famine of your houses, but bring your youngest brother to me, so that your word shall be proved true, and ye shall not die. And they did so. And they said one to another, We are truly guilty concerning our brother, in that we saw the anguish of his soul when he besought us, and we would not hear. Therefore this distress has come upon us. And Reuben answered them, saying, Did I not speak to you, saying, Do not sin against the child? And you would not hear. Therefore, behold, also his blood is required. And they did not know that Joseph understood, for he spoke to them by an interpreter. And he turned himself about for them and wept. And he returned to them again and talked with them and took Simeon from them and bound him before their eyes. Then Joseph commanded their sacks to be filled with grain and that every man's money be put back into his sack and to give them provision for the way. And so he did unto them, and they loaded their asses with grain and departed from there. And as one of them opened his sack to give his ass fodder in the inn, he saw his money, for, behold, it was in the mouth of the sack. And he said to his brothers, My money has been put back, and, lo, it is even in my sack. And their hearts failed, and they were afraid, saying one to another, What is this that God has done to us? And they came to Jacob their father unto the land of Canaan, and told him all that happened to them, saying, The man, the lord of the land, spoke roughly to us, and took us for spies of the country. And we said to him, We are honest, we are not spies. We are twelve brothers, sons of our father. One is not, and the youngest is this day with our father in the land of Canaan. And the man, the lord of the country, said to us, By this I shall know that you are honest, Leave one of your brothers here with me, and take food for the famine of your households, and be gone, and bring your youngest brother to me. Then I shall know that you are not spies, but that you are honest. So I will deliver you your young brother, and you shall trade in the land. And when they emptied their sacks, behold, every man's bundle of money was in his sack. And when they and their father saw the bundles of money, they were afraid. And Jacob their father said to them, You have bereaved me. Joseph is not, and Simeon is not. And now you will take Benjamin away too. All these things are against me. And Reuben spoke to his father, saying, Kill my two sons if I do not bring him to you. Deliver him into my hand, and I will bring him to you again. And he said, My son shall not go down with you, for his brother is dead and he is left alone. If mischief should befall him by the way you go, then ye shall bring down my gray hairs with sorrow unto the grave. Genesis chapter 43. And the famine was sore in the land, and it came to pass when they had eaten up the grain which they had brought out of Egypt. Their father said to them, Go again and buy us a little food. And Judah spoke to him, saying, The man solemnly protested to us, saying, You shall not see my face unless your brother is with you. And if you will send our brother with us, we will go down and buy you food. But if you will not send him, we will not go down. For the man said unto us, You shall not see my face unless your brother is with you. And Israel said, Why have you dealt so ill with me to tell the man whether you had yet a brother? And they said, The man asked us strictly of our state and of our kindred, saying, Is your father still alive? Have you yet another brother? And we told him according to the tenor of these words, Could we certainly know that he would say, Bring your brother down? And Judah said unto Israel his father, Send the boy with me, and we will arise and go, so that we may live and not die, both we and you, and also our little ones. I will be surety for him. You shall require him of my hand. If I do not bring him to you and set him before you, then let me bear the blame forever. For unless we had lingered, surely now we would have returned the second time. And their father Israel said to them, If it must be so now, do this. Take of the first fruits of the land in your vessels and carry down the man a present, a little balm and a little honey, spices and myrrh, nuts and almonds. And take double money in your hand, and the money that was brought again in the mouth of your sacks. 
carry it again in your hand. Perhaps it was an oversight. Take also your brother, and arise, go again to the man. And God Almighty give you mercy before the man, so that he may send away your brother and Benjamin. If I am bereaved, I am bereaved. And the men took the present, and they took double money in their hand, and Benjamin. And they rose up and went down to Egypt and stood before Joseph. And when Joseph saw Benjamin with them, he said to the rulers of his house, Bring these men home and kill and make ready, for these men shall dine with me at noon. And the man did as Joseph said. And the man brought the men into Joseph's house. And the men were afraid because they were brought into Joseph's house. And they said, Because of the money that was returned in our sacks at the first time we are brought in, so that he may seek occasion against us and fall upon us and take us for bondmen and our asses. And they came near to the steward of Joseph's house, and they talked with him at the door of the house. And they said, O oh, sir, we indeed came down the first time to buy food. And it came to pass when we were came to the inn that we opened the sacks, and behold, every man's money in the mouth of his sack. Our money is full weight, and we have brought it again in our hands, and we have brought down other money in our hands to buy food. We cannot tell who put our money in our sacks. And the steward said, Peace be unto you, do not fear. Your God and the God of your father has given you treasure in your sacks. I had your money. And he brought Simeon out to them, and the man brought the men into Joseph's house, and gave them water, and they washed their feet, and he gave fodder to the asses, and they made ready the presents for the coming of Joseph at noon, for they heard that he should eat bread there. And when Joseph came home, they brought him the presents which was in their hand into the house, and bowed themselves to him, to the earth. And he asked them as to their welfare, and said, Is your father well, the old man of whom you spoke? Is he still alive? And they answered, Your servant, our father, is in good health. He is still alive. And they bowed down their heads and made obeisance. And he lifted up his eyes and saw his brother Benjamin, his mother's son, and said, Is this your younger brother of whom you spoke to me? And he said, God be gracious unto you, my son. And Joseph made haste, for his bowels yearned toward his brother. And he sought a place to weep. And he entered into his room and wept there. And he washed his face and went out and controlled himself and said, Set the bread on. And they set it on for him by himself and for them by themselves, and for the Egyptians who ate with him by themselves, because the Egyptians may not eat bread with the Hebrews for that is an abomination to the Egyptians. And they sat before him, the firstborn according to his birthright, and the youngest according to his youth. And the men marveled at one another. And he took messes unto them from before him, but Benjamin's mess was five times as much as any of theirs. And they drank and were merry with him. Chapter 44, Genesis chapter 44. And Joseph commanded the steward of his house, saying, Fill the men's sacks with food, as much as they can carry, and put every man's money in his sack's mouth. And put my cup, the silver cup, in the sack's mouth of the youngest, and his grain money. And they did according to the word that Joseph had spoken. As soon as the morning was light, the men were sent away, they and their asses. And when they had gone out of the city not far off, Joseph said to his steward, Rise up now and follow after the men. And when you overtake them, say to them, Why have ye rewarded evil for good? Is not this in which my Lord drinks, and by which indeed he divines? You have done evil in so doing. And the steward overtook them, and he spoke to them these same words. And they said to him, Why does your Lord say these words? God forbid that your servant should do according to this thing. Behold, the money which we found in our sack's mouth, we brought it in to you out of the land of Canaan. How then should we steal out of your Lord's house silver or gold? With whomever of your servants it may be found, both let him die, and we all will be my Lord's bondmen. And he said, Now also let it be according to your word. 
He with whom it is found shall be my servant, and you shall be blameless. Then they speedily took down every man his sack to the ground, and every man opened his sack, and he searched beginning at the oldest and leaving off at the youngest. And the cup was found in Benjamin's sack. Then they tore their clothes, and every man loaded his ass and returned to the city. And Judah and his brothers came to Joseph's house, for he was still there. And they fell before him on the ground. And Joseph said to them, What deed is this that you have done? Do you not know that such a man as I can certainly divine? And Judah said, What shall we say unto my Lord? What shall we speak, or how shall we clear ourselves? God has found out the iniquity of your servants. Behold, we are my Lord's servants, both we and he also with whom the cup is found. And he said, God forbid that I should do so. The man in whose hand the cup is found, he shall be my servant. And as for you, get you up in peace to your father. Then Judah came near and said, O my Lord, pray let your servant speak a word in my Lord's ears. And do not let your anger burn against your servant, for you are even as Pharaoh. My Lord asked his servant, saying, Do you have a father or a brother? And we said unto my Lord, We have a father, an old man, and a child of his old age, a little one. And his brother is dead, and he alone is left of his father, and his father loves him. And you said to your servants, Bring him down to me, that I may set my eyes upon him. And we said to my Lord, The boy cannot leave his father, for if he should leave his father, his father would die. And you said to your servants, Unless your youngest brother comes down with you, you shall see my face no more. And when we came up to your servant, my father, we told him the words of my Lord. And our father said, Go again, and buy us a little food. And we said, We cannot go down. If our youngest brother is with us, then we will go down, for we may not see the man's face, unless our youngest brother is with us. And your servant, my father, said to us, You know that my wife bore me two sons. And the one went out from me, and I said, Surely he is torn to pieces. And I never saw him since. And if you take this also from me, and mischief befall him, you shall bring down my gray hairs with sorrow to the grave. Now therefore, when I come to your servant, my father, and the boy is not with us, seeing that his life is bound up in the lad's life, it shall come to pass that when he sees that the lad is not with us, he will die. And your servants shall bring down the gray hairs of your servant, our father, with sorrow to the grave. For your servant became surety for the lad to my father, saying, If I do not bring him to you, then I shall bear the blame to my father forever. Now therefore, I pray you, let your servant abide instead of the boy as a bondman to my Lord. And let the boy go up with his brothers. For how shall I go up to my father, and the boy be not with me? Lest perhaps I see the evil that shall come upon my father. Genesis chapter 45. Then Joseph could not control himself before all those who stood by him, and he cried, Cause every man to go out from me. And there stood no man with him, while Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept aloud. And the Egyptians in the house of Pharaoh heard, and Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Does my father still live? And his brothers could not answer him, for they were troubled at his presence. And Joseph said to his brothers, Come near me, I pray you. And they came near, and he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. Now therefore do not be grieved nor angry with yourselves that you sold me here, for God sent me before you to preserve life. For these two years the famine has been in the land, and there are still five years in which there shall be neither plowing nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve you a remnant in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So now it was not you who sent me here, but God. And he made me a father to Pharaoh, and lord of all of his house, and a ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry now, and go up to my father, and say to him, So says your son Joseph, God has made me lord of all of Egypt. Come down to me, and do not wait. 
and you shall dwell in the land of Goshen. And you shall be near to me, you and your children and your children's children, and your flocks and your herds and all that you have. And I will nourish you there, for there are still five years of famine, lest you and your household and all that you have come to poverty. And behold, your eyes shall see, and the eyes of my brother Benjamin, that is, in my mouth, that speaks to you. And ye shall tell my father of all my glory in Egypt, and all that you have seen, and you shall hurry and bring down my father here. And he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept. And Benjamin wept upon his neck. Moreover, he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And afterward his brothers talked with him. And the report of it was heard in Pharaoh's house, saying, Joseph's brothers have come. And it was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and of his servants. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, Say unto your brothers, Do this, load your beast, and go get you into the land of Canaan, and take your father and your household, and come unto me. And I will give you the good of the land, and ye shall eat the fat of the land. Now you are commanded, Do this, take wagons out of the land of Egypt for your little ones and for your wives, and bring your father, and come. And do not regard your stuff, for the good of all the land of Egypt is yours. And the children of Israel did so. And Joseph gave them wagons according to the commandment of Pharaoh, and gave them provision for the way. To all of them he gave each man changes of clothing, but to Benjamin he gave three hundred pieces of silver and five changes of clothing. And to his father he sent this, ten asses loaded with the good things of Egypt, and ten she-asses loaded with grain and bread and meat for his father by the way. And so he sent his brothers away, and they departed. And he said to them, See that you do not fall out by the way. And they went up out of Egypt and came into the land of Canaan unto Jacob their father. And they told him, saying, Joseph is alive, and he is governor over all of the land of Egypt. And Jacob's heart fainted for he could not believe them. And they told him all the words of Joseph which he had said to them, and when he saw the wagons which Joseph had sent to carry him, the spirit of Jacob their father revived. And Israel said, It is enough. Joseph my son is alive. I will go and see him before I die. Genesis chapter 46. And Israel took his journey with all that he had, and came to Beersheba, and offered sacrifices to the God of his father Isaac. And God spoke to Israel in the visions of the night, and said, Jacob, Jacob. And he said, Here I am. And he said, I am God, the God of your fathers. Do not fear to go down to Egypt, for I will make of you a great nation. I will go down with you into Egypt, and I will also surely bring you up again. And Joseph shall put his hand upon your eyes, and Jacob rose up from Beersheba. And the sons of Israel carried Jacob their father, and their little ones, and their wives, in the wagons which Pharaoh had sent to carry him. And they took their cattle and their goods which they had gotten in the land of Canaan, and came into Egypt, Jacob and all his seed with him, his sons and his sons' sons with him, his daughters and his sons' daughters, and all his seed, he brought with him into Egypt. Now these are the names of the children of Israel who came into Egypt, Jacob and his sons, Reuben, Jacob's firstborn, and the sons of Reuben were Hanok, and Phalu, and Hezron, and Carmi, and the sons of Simeon were Jemuel, and Jamin, and Ohad, and Jachin, and Zohar, and Shaul, the son of a woman of Canaan. Now the sons of Levi were Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. And the sons of Judah were Er, Onan, and Shelah, and Perez, and Zara. But Er and Onan died in the land of Canaan. And the sons of Perez were Hezron and Hamul. And the sons of Issachar were Tola, and Fuva, and Job, and Shimron. And the sons of Zebulun were Sered, and Elon, and Jahiliel. These are the sons of Leah, whom she bore to Jacob in Pandan Aram, with his daughter Dinah. And all the souls of his sons and his daughters were thirty-three. And the sons of Gad were Ziphion, and Haggai, 
Shuni and Ezbon, Eri and Erodai and Erili. And the sons of Asher were Jimna and Ishua and Isua and Beriah and Sira, their sister. And the sons of Beriah were Heber and Melchiel. These are the sons of Zilpah, whom Laban gave to Leah, his daughter, and those whom she bore to Jacob were sixteen souls. Now the sons of Rachel, Jacob's wife, were Joseph and Benjamin. And unto Joseph in the land of Egypt were born Manasseh and Ephraim, whom Asenath, the daughter of Potiphera, priest of On, bore him. And the sons of Benjamin were Bela and Beker and Ashbal, Gira and Naaman, Ehi and Rosh, Muppin and Hupin and Ard. These are the sons of Rachel who were born to Jacob, and all the sons were fourteen. And the sons of Dan were Hushim, the sons of Naphtali were Jazziel, and Gunai and Jezer, and Shelem. These are the sons of Bilhah, whom Laban gave to Rachel his daughter, and she bore these to Jacob. And all the souls were seven. And all the souls that came with Jacob into Egypt, who came out of his loins beside Jacob's sons' wives, all the souls were sixty-six. And the sons of Joseph, who were born to him in Egypt, were two souls. And all the souls of the house of Jacob, who came into Egypt, were seventy. And he sent Judah before him to Joseph to direct his face to Goshen. And they came to the land of Goshen, and Joseph made his chariot ready and went up to meet Israel his father to Goshen and presented himself to him. And he fell on his neck and wept on his neck a good while. And Israel said to Joseph, Now let me die, since I have seen your face, because you are still alive. And Joseph said to his brothers and to his father's house, I will go up and show Pharaoh and say unto him, My brothers and my father's house, whom were in the land of Canaan, have come unto me. And the men are shepherds, for their trade has been to feed cattle. And they have brought their flocks and their herds and all that they have. And it shall come to pass when Pharaoh shall call you and shall say, What is your occupation? Then you shall say, Your servant's trade has been about cattle from our youth, even until now both we and also our fathers, so that you may live in the land of Goshen, for every shepherd is an abomination to the Egyptians. Chapter 47, Genesis chapter 47, this is Family Bible Reading Fellowship. Then Joseph came and told Pharaoh and said, My father and my brothers and their flocks and their herds and all that they have have come out of the land of Canaan. And behold, they are in the land of Goshen. And he took some of his brothers, five men, and presented them to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto his brothers, What is your occupation? And they said to Pharaoh, Your servants are shepherds, both we and our fathers. Then said moreover to Pharaoh, For we have come to live in the land, for your servants have no pasture for their flocks. For the famine is sore in the land of Canaan. Now therefore we pray you, let your servants dwell in the land of Goshen. And Pharaoh spoke to Joseph, saying, Your father and your brothers have come unto you. The land of Egypt is before you. Make your father and brothers to live in the best of the land. In the land of Goshen, let them live. And if you know of any men of ability among them, that then make them rulers over my house. And Joseph brought in Jacob his father and set him before Pharaoh. And Jacob blessed Pharaoh, and Pharaoh said unto Jacob, How old are you? And Jacob said to Pharaoh, The days of the years of my pilgrimage are a hundred and thirty years. Few and evil have been the days of the years of my life, and I have not attained unto the days of the years of the life of my fathers in the days of their pilgrimage. And Jacob blessed Pharaoh and went out from before Pharaoh. And Joseph placed his father and his brothers and gave them a possession in the land of Egypt, in the best of the land, in the land of Ramesses, as Pharaoh had commanded. And Joseph nourished his father and his brothers and all his father's household with bread according to their families. And there was no bread in all the land, for the famine was very sore, so that the land of Egypt and all the land of Canaan fainted because of the famine. And Joseph gathered up all the money that was found in the land of Egypt 
and into the land of Canaan for the grain which they bought. And Joseph brought the money into Pharaoh's house. And when money failed in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came to Joseph and said, Give us bread, for why should we die in your presence? For the money failed. And Joseph said, Give your cattle, and I will give you for your cattle if money fail. And they brought their cattle to Joseph, and Joseph gave them bread for their horses and for their flocks and for the cattle of the herds and for the asses. And he fed them with bread for all their cattle for that year. And when that year was ended, they came to him the second year and said, We will not hide it from my Lord how that our money is spent. My Lord also has our herds of cattle. There is nothing left in the sight of my Lord but our bodies and our lands. Why should we die before your eyes, both we and our land? Buy us and our land for bread, and we and our land will be servants for Pharaoh. And give us seed that we may live and not die, that the land be not desolate. And Joseph bought all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh, for the Egyptians sold every man his field, because the famine prevailed over them. And so the land became Pharaoh's, and as for the people, he removed them to cities from one end of the borders of Egypt even to the other end of it. Only he did not buy the land of the priests, for the priests had a portion from Pharaoh and ate their portion which Pharaoh gave them. Therefore they did not sell their land. Then Joseph said to the people, Behold, I have bought you this day and your land for Pharaoh. Lo, here is seed for you, and you shall sow the land. And it shall come to pass in the increase that you shall give a fifth part unto Pharaoh, and four parts shall be your own, for seed of the field, and for your food, and for them of your household, and for food for your little ones. And they said, You have saved our lives. Let us find grace in the sight of my Lord, and we will be Pharaoh's servants. And Joseph made it a law of the land of Egypt to this day, that Pharaoh should have the fifth part excepting only the land of the priests, which did not become Pharaoh's. And Israel lived in the land of Egypt in the country of Goshen, and they had possessions in it and grew and multiplied exceedingly. And Jacob lived in the land of Egypt seventeen years, so that the whole age of Jacob was a hundred and forty-seven years. And the time drew near that he must die. And he called his son Joseph and said to him, If now I have found grace in your sight, I pray you put your hand under my thigh, and deal kindly and truly with me. I pray you, do not bury me in Egypt, but I will lie with my fathers. You shall carry me out of Egypt, and bury me in their burying place. And he said, I will do as you have said. And he said, Swear unto me. And he swore unto him. And Israel bowed himself upon the bed's head. Genesis, we begin reading now, chapter 48. And it came to pass after these things that one told Joseph, Behold, your father is sick. And he took with him his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. And one told Jacob and said, Behold, your son Joseph comes to you. And Israel strengthened himself and sat upon the bed. And Jacob said to Joseph, God Almighty appear to me at Luz in the land of Canaan and bless me. And he said to me, Behold, I will make you fruitful and multiply you, and I will make of you a multitude of people, and will give this land to your seed after you for an everlasting possession. And now your two sons Ephraim and Manasseh, who are born to you in the land of Egypt, before I came to you in Egypt, are mine. Like Reuben and Simeon, they shall be mine. And your issue which you beget after them shall be yours and shall be called after the name of their brothers in their inheritance. And as for me, when I came from Padam, Rachel died beside me in the land of Canaan in the way, when there was still but a little way to come to Ephrath. And I buried her there in the way of Ephrath. The same is Bethlehem. And Israel beheld Joseph's son and said, Who are these? And Joseph said to his father, These are my sons whom God has given me in this place. And he said, I pray you, bring them to me, and I will bless them. Now the eyes of Israel were dim for age, so that he could not see. And he brought them near him, and he kissed them and embraced them. And Israel said to Joseph, I had not thought I would see your face, and lo, 
God has showed me also your seed. And Joseph brought them out from between his knees, and he bowed himself with his face to the earth. And Joseph took them both, Ephraim in his right hand toward Israel's left hand, and Manasseh in his left hand toward Israel's right hand. And he brought them near to him. And Israel stretched out his right hand and laid it upon Ephraim's head, who was the younger, and his left hand upon Manasseh's head, crossing his hands, for Manasseh was the firstborn. And he blessed Joseph and said, May God, before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac walked, the God who fed me all my life unto this day, the angel who redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads, and let my name be named on them, and the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac, and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. And when Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand upon the head of Ephraim, it displeased him, and he held up his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head to Manasseh's head. And Joseph said to his father, Not so, my father, for this is the firstborn. Put your right hand upon his head. And his father refused and said, I know, my son, I know. He also shall become a people, and he also shall be great. But truly his younger brothers shall be greater than he is and his seed shall become a multitude of nations. And he blessed them that day, saying, In you shall Israel bless, saying, God make you as Ephraim and as Manasseh. And he set Ephraim before Manasseh. And Israel said to Joseph, Behold, I die. But God shall be with you, and bring you again into the land of your fathers. Moreover, I have given to you one portion above your brothers, which I took out of the hand of the Amorite with my sword and with my bow. Chapter 49. And Jacob called to his sons and said, Gather yourselves together, that I may tell you what shall befall you in the last days. Gather yourselves together and hear, you sons of Jacob, and listen to Israel your father. Reuben, you are my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. Unstable as water, you shall not excel, because you went up to your father's bed. Then you defiled it. You went up to my couch. Simeon and Levi are brothers. Instruments of cruelty are in their habitations. O my soul, do not come into their secret. Let not my honor be united with their assembly. For in their anger they killed a man, and in their self-will they dug down a wall. Let their anger be cursed, for it was fierce, and their wrath, for it was cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. And Judah, may your brothers praise you. May your hand be in the neck of your enemies. May your father's children bow down before you. Judah is a lion's whelp. My son, you have gone up from the prey. He stooped, he crouched like a lion, like a strong lion. Who shall rouse him up? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come. And the gathering of the people shall be unto him, binding his fowl to the vine, and his ass's colt to the choice vine. He washed his garments in wine, and his clothes in the blood of grapes. His eyes shall be darker than wine, and his teeth whiter than milk. Zebulun shall live at the haven of the sea, and he shall be a haven for ships, and his border shall be unto Sidon. Issachar is a strong ass crouching down between two burdens, and he saw that rest was good and that the land was pleasant, and he bowed his shoulder to bear and became a servant unto tribute. Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan shall be a serpent, by the way, an adder in the path that bites the horse's heels so that its rider shall fall backward. I have waited for thy salvation, O Lord. Gad, a troop shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at the last. And out of Ashur his bread shall be fat, and he shall yield royal dainties. Naphtali is a hind let loose. He gives goodly words. Joseph is a fruitful bough, a fruitful bough by a well whose daughters run over the wall. The archers have sorely grieved him and shot at him and hated him, but his bow abode in strength. 
and the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. From there is the shepherd, the stone of Israel, even by the God of your father who shall help you, and by the Almighty who shall bless you with blessings of heaven above, blessings of the deep that lie under, blessings of the breasts and of the womb. The blessings of your father have prevailed above the blessings of my progenitors to the utmost bound of the everlasting hills. They shall be on the head of Joseph and on the crown of the head of him that was separate from his brothers. Benjamin is a wolf that tears in pieces. In the morning he shall devour the prey, and at night he shall divide the spoil. All these are the twelve tribes of Israel, and this is what their father spoke to them and blessed them. Every one according to his blessing he blessed them. And he charged them and said to them, I am to be gathered to my people. Bury me with my father in the cave that is in the field of Ephron, the Hittite, in the cave that is in the field of Machpelah, which is before Mamre, in the land of Canaan, the cave which Abraham bought with the field of Ephraim, the Hittite, for a possession of a burying place. There they buried Abraham and Sarah, his wife. There they buried Isaac and Rebekah, his wife. And there I buried Leah. The purchase of the field and of the cave that is in it was from the children of Heth. And when Jacob had made an end of commanding his sons, he gathered up his feet into his bed and yielded up the spirit, and he was gathered unto his people. Chapter 50. And Joseph fell upon his father's face and wept upon him and kissed him. And Joseph commanded his servants, the physicians, to embalm his father. And the physicians embalmed Israel, and forty days were fulfilled for him, for so they are fulfilled the days of those who are embalmed. And the Egyptians mourned for him seventy days. And when the days of his mourning were past, Joseph spoke to the house of Pharaoh, saying, If now I have found grace in your eyes, I pray you speak to the ears of Pharaoh, saying, My father made me swear, saying, Lo, I die. You shall bury me in my grave, which I have dug for me in the land of Canaan. Now therefore I pray you, let me go up and bury my father, and I will come again. And Pharaoh said, Go up and bury your father according as he made you swear. And Joseph went up to bury his father, and all the servants of Pharaoh went up with him, the elders of his house, and all the elders of the land of Egypt, and all of the house of Joseph, and his brothers, and his father's house. They left only their little ones, and their flocks, and their herds in the land of Goshen. And both chariots and horsemen went up with him, and it was a very great company. And they came to the threshing floor of Atad, beyond Jordan, and there they mourned with a great and very sore lamentation. And he made a mourning for his father seven days. And when the inhabitants of the land, the Canaanites, saw the mourning in the floor of Atad, they said, This is a grievous mourning to the Egyptians. Therefore the name of it was called Abel Mizraim, which is beyond Jordan. And his sons did to him according as he commanded them, for he was carried to the land of Canaan and buried in the cave of the field of Machpelah, which Abraham bought with the field for a possession of a burying place from Ephron the Hittite before Mamre. And Joseph entered into Egypt, he and his brothers, and all that went up with him to bury his father after he had buried his father. And when Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, Joseph will perhaps hate us and will certainly repay us all the evil which we did unto him. And they sent a messenger to Joseph, saying, Your father did command before he died, saying, So shall you say to Joseph, Forgive, I pray you now, the trespass of your brothers and their sin. For they did evil to you, and we pray you forgive now the trespass of the servants of God the God of your father. And Joseph wept when they spoke to him. And his brothers also went and fell down before his face. And they said, Behold, we are your servants. And Joseph said to them, Do not fear, for am I in the place of God? But as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it for good, 
to bring to pass, as it is this day, to save a great many people alive. Now, therefore, do not fear. I will nourish you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. And Joseph lived in Egypt, he and his father's house. And Joseph lived a hundred and ten years. And Joseph saw Ephraim's children of the third generation. Also the children of Mechir, the son of Manasseh, were brought up upon Joseph's knees. And Joseph said to his brothers, I die. And God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land into the land which he swore to Abraham and to Isaac and to Jacob. And Joseph took an oath of the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and ye shall carry up my bones from here. And so Joseph died, being a hundred and ten years old, and they embalmed him, and he was put in a coffin in Egypt. This concludes the reading of the book of Genesis.